How Ken Griffin is being implicated and sued for fraud in a number of lawsuits. How the shorts are trying to convince you to sell at a cheap price, like $25 per share before the squeeze has even happened. Hey, welcome to AMC Daily. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications by hitting the bell so you never miss any of our uploads and also enter our giveaway. But everyone remember this is not a financial advice video. So Biotech Moose tweeted saying, Ken, what on earth are you doing? Kenneth Griffin is being implicated in an insurance scam lawsuit over two pieces of art that he bought valued at over $100 million. Now, those art pieces suddenly went up in flames a few weeks ago, like that documents warehouse. But now, Ken Griffin is implicated in this massive fraud for filing fraudulent insurance claims. As this meme says, Ken is saying, when I buy art and burn down the building to claim the insurance money, I make sure to have copies made and valued at the original price that I paid. What's happened is that Ken Griffin has bought some art pieces and hidden those original pieces, but he's also created some synthetic pieces, some fake copies, and stored them in his vault which was magically burnt down. He's then claimed that those fake synthetic copies were the original art pieces, and he's trying to claim the actual insurance money on those fake copies. And now Ken Griffin is being sued by underwriters at Lloyd's of London, Great Lakes Insurance, Swiss, RE International, and AIG Property Casualty Company. As a result, Ken Griffin has been subpoenaed, and it says that petitioners are entitled to Mr. Griffin's account of exactly what he personally observed and discussed concerning the sale and attempted sale of artworks that were in the creeks during the fire in the form of admissible sworn testimony. And as a result, they've requested tons of documentation, evidence for his purchases of those paintings, the value of those paintings, any negotiations, the inspections, and everything else, but obviously to hide this giant lawsuit. A day after this news story broke, Ken Griffin made a timely $300 million donation to Harvard School of Arts and Sciences, now obviously deflected media attention away from his involvement in the Art Fire event. Because if you Google the words Ken Griffin and art, the donation story is pushed to the top of the results. Basically, if you try and search for Ken Griffin and art, all you see is tons of articles about his donation and none about this giant lawsuit for fraudulent claims. This really is an all-new level of criminality for Ken Griffin, as he's not only scamming stock market investors, but he's now also scamming insurance companies in the art world as well. Hopefully, this lawsuit drags out his time where he's forced to pay some kind of restitution and his additional crimes aren't covered. It also shows that Ken Griffin himself may actually be struggling if he's trying to file fraudulent claims for hundreds of millions of dollars worth of art. Maybe Ken Griffin has some giant payments that are about to forge you that he's so desperate to meet, he would even commit fraud for. And suspended POS has tweeted, it seems the clowns in the shorts have been giving low ball price targets, or $25 to $50 per share for AMC. But suspended POS points out Adam Aaron recently said in his Vegas outing and paraphrasing, he says, once you destroy the short sellers and their short thesis, they'll be forced to cover their entire 135 million short shares. On top of this, again, when that short the thesis is destroyed, it won't just be those legally disclosed short positions that are closed out of, but all of those synthetic shorts as well. When a company is growing and profitable, it makes no logical sense to continue shorting that company. And that's when you'll see tons of funds covering their shorts. We know that those largest funds are going to try to not close out of their shorts, but we'll see tons of smaller hedge funds closing out of their entire positions. Basically, any fund that is currently shorting AMC that doesn't face bankruptcy, if they close out of their short position, will close their shorts. And remember that back in June of 2021, when we ran to $72 per share, they only closed out of around 20 million legally disclosed shorts. If 20 million legally disclosed shorts being closed out of can push us to $72, imagine what 135 million legally disclosed shorts can actually do to the price. And for a prime example, if we look at the finger motion stock, which has just paid off all of their debt, 
retiring all of those convertible bonds, we can see exactly what's happened to their share price. After the news was announced that they've paid off their entire debt balance, their stock price jumped over 10 times from below $1 per share to above $10 per share. The price did fall after that, but we know that a short squeeze is a fairly short-term event. Now, if AMC's price jumps by 10 times on top of the 10 times reverse split, that's a 100 times price increase. I'm not saying that that's AMC's maximum potential, but if the price of AMC does increase by 100 times its current value, I think that stands a pretty good chance of causing the short squeeze. Remember that a 100 times price increase from the reverse split and this 10 times increase from paying down their debt doesn't include any squeezing whatsoever. That's just from the reverse split and from paying down debt. So on top of this 100 times price increase, you would also see additional increases if the shorts end up being squeezed. And if the shorts end up closing out of their positions, as Edgerud Britchick tweeted, he said, the squeeze never happened. Yet because he's shown this many times. But obviously we know that back in June of 2021, only 20 million legally disclosed shorts were closed out of. He's also attached this chart, which shows that A, the price is still suppressed and the coil is wound very tightly, and also that B, we are due for another run-up shortly. If this next run-up is combined with A and C turning profitable and repaying off their debt and performing the reverse split, I think that definitely stands brilliant chance of causing the squeeze. And as Merica tweeted, even Allegheny's attorneys acknowledge and know that their own suit is simply delay tactics. He tweeted, saying that Allegheny attorneys acknowledge that their own suit and the delay it's causing is preventing ANC from raising capital and it's harmful to existing shareholders. And therefore, we knew from the very beginning that this lawsuit was simply a delayed tactic. It says the defendant's counsel asserted, among other things, that AMC had a compelling business need to raise additional capital in order to pay down outstanding debt obligations. And this ongoing lawsuit could risk the long-term health of AMC, which in turn would cause material harm to the members of this settlement class. And as Stephanie tweeted, she said that's why this week and likely the next few weeks will be full of psychological warfare. She said it's a big earnings week for AMC, and these shorts know that we've killed it. AMC has been improving revenues and increasing revenues and reducing their costs to ultimately move to becoming profitable. And therefore, their only game plan, just like it's always been, is to try and convince the AMC, APEs to sell their shares preskies. And this is all happening at a time, as Zero Hedge tweeted, when Blackstone's commercial real estate fund has limited withdrawals for its sixth straight month. Blackstone has been limiting customer withdrawals, just like Citadel has been doing for the last year, because clearly the economy is in dire, dire straits. Guys, that's all we have for you today. What is your opinion about AMC stock? Get involved and let us know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.